to switch off your camera. Okay. Hello everyone and welcome to the last uh, international edition of the Xprime Time for Business show uh, for this year. Uh, yeah, I think you already know that uh, we have made during these uh, weeks, uh, starting September, a long trip, uh, visiting some very interesting markets already. We were uh, meeting the markets of Poland, Croatia, Slovenia, Georgia, Russia, Romania, and today our trip uh, will uh, make a last stop uh, for this year in Bulgaria. So we will talk about the Bulgarian insurance market. We will see how it coped with the difficult uh, situation offered by uh, uh, this year. What are the perspectives? What are the thoughts of its uh, main players regarding the future? Uh, uh, before actually starting, I uh, have to remind you that uh, for being in touch with us with, and with the latest news and uh, materials that we are producing, I would kindly invite you to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, to follow us on the LinkedIn pages. And also, of course, visit the exprim.com website where you can find a lot of information. My name is Daniela Getsu. I'm editorial director of the Extreme Publications and in charge with this uh, international uh, uh, product. And today I am pleased to welcome in our studio, uh, in a virtual manner, of course, uh, three important representatives of the Bulgarian insurance market. Uh, to start with, Mr. Vladimir Savov, Vice President of the Bulgarian uh, Financial Supervising Authority, responsible for the insurance uh, uh, sector. Uh, Mrs. Rumiana Betova, member of the managing board of Euroins. Uh, Euroins, as you all know, is part of Eurohold Group, an important player already in a regional uh, way more than uh, Bulgaria, also in our home market in Romania. And uh, finally, Mr. Stefan Sofiansky, he is Secretary General at uh, the National Bureau of Bulgarian Motor Insurance. Insurance, uh, 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 I think it's a market entity that couldn't miss in our, uh, in our show, given the high importance that motor insurance has uh, in your market, as in many other CE markets, uh, of course. Uh, coming to the Bulgarian insurance market, uh, I think you know, uh, all of you, that uh, we are uh, monitoring all the CE markets and uh, uh, following the results and publishing statistical results for all of them. And in doing this, uh, we have seen that uh, in the first half of 2020, uh, although as expected, there was a slight decrease in, uh, in uh, underwritings due to the special situation we are uh, living in. Uh, it is interesting to observe that in profitability terms, the results was, were highly improving as compared with the previous years. This situation uh, seems to be the same for the third quarter also, even with uh, improving underwritings, better uh, uh, rates in comparison with the correspondent period of the last year. So I would say that uh, despite the, our fears and the initial very uh, black expectations, uh, in the end, the market performed quite better than expected. And uh, this is uh, what I'm inviting you to comment uh, on. Uh, starting with Mr. Savov, I would like to ask you in fact, to give us a full picture of the market. How did it perform? How, how strong was the impact of the crisis? What line of business have suffered the most? Or uh, at the other end, if you see 
uh, uh, some business lines showing a potential for uh, faster developing in this environment. Mr. Savov, please, the mic Thank is yours. You. Thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon to everyone who is uh, listening to us. Uh, yes, it is, of course, been a very interesting year uh, for all of us, for all households, businesses, regulators, policymakers, decision makers on a local and global scale, as we well know. Uh, and uh, we can discuss the pandemic uh, endlessly, uh, as we as we do every day. Uh, but indeed, if we focus on the Bulgarian insurance market, it has been, it has been, um, yeah, I, I would say better than expected, uh, for sure. Of course, it could always be even better, but uh, uh, not as uh, uh, not as uh, as bad as uh, as things looked uh, a few months ago. Uh, I think we should all first take a step back and understand that the insurance business is the one business that is designed to deal with crisis, right? To help households, to help businesses and organizations to deal with risks and to deal with crisis, right? Uh, on one hand. On the other hand, as any other business, it was hit heavily in the first wave of the pandemic, February, March, April, when there was a very strict uh, lockdown here in Bulgaria, then uh, slightly uh, better summer, and now we are at a second wave, which turned out, of course, to be a lot worse than the first, uh, but with the more measured uh, lockdown measures. On the other hand, we also had um, global markets that, uh, that uh, insurance entities invest into their assets and reserves. They were very hit very heavily at the start of the crisis. Uh, now they normalized um, and recovered. Uh, business that completely stopped at some point, such as uh, uh, travel, for example, uh, or um, uh, other business-related expenses were completely cut at the start. Now they're starting to recover. Uh, so uh, again, I would say on the backdrop of very... Um, bad expectations in the first uh, few months of the year, now we are closer to some sort of uh, a bit no more normal uh, situation. What saved the market, of course, uh, has been the mandatory types of insurance, uh, such as uh, mandatory third-party liability of, um, of, uh, for automotive uh, and for automobiles. Uh, this is something that everybody has to do and has been doing. And also uh, the, um, the Casco insurance, um, also related to cars, seems that the Bulgarian um, Bulgarian um, uh, consumers, uh, you know, tend to take uh, the best care for their cars at all times. On the other hand, of course, everything what was related to tourism and travel um, almost fell off a cliff, and uh, in between. You have the lines of business such as property insurance, and especially lately, I think health insurance, which initially was hit also hard. Now with a focus on, again, healthcare um, related to COVID, but not only, um, people are starting to think about insurance product that, uh, that could help. And against this backdrop, you had the insurance companies also, after the initial shock, after the fact that they had to also completely stop or rethink and rehash uh, their business, now they're starting to think about solutions that they can offer, um, uh, again, to their clients to help them deal uh, with, the, with the fallout uh, of the pandemic. For example, COVID-related risks initially in health insurance uh, were dropped uh, by many companies. Now we see in Bulgaria quite a few are starting to offer this uh, this type of coverage uh, uh, to their clients again. So all in all, uh, we have seen the gross um, the gross premium income, as you said, uh, almost stable. Slight uh, slight growth in MTPL, slight uh, decline in uh, motor hull. Um, recovery in health insurance, decline in travel related insurance products and tourism. Um, the big question is what happens next year, of course. That's, uh, that's really the big question. Well, hopefully the situation will uh, improve overall. 
Uh, although uh, I would uh, have an additional question for you. It is known that usually the, the trends in the macro, in the large economy, let's say, are uh, need about six months to, to hit uh, or to manifest themselves also in the insurance field. Do you think that for insurers, uh, it was already touched the lowest point, let's say so, in terms of crisis impact, or we can see further difficulties? Uh, well, first of all, we have, of course, the statistics for the first three quarters, and we have to yet see how the year will end. It seems that in terms of profitability, as you, as you mentioned, things look good, but they look good now. And uh, one reason, of course, is uh, that, again, uh, uh, people travel less and there are less uh, accidents on the road, and this is a major impact on, uh, on the profitability. Now... A few months down the road, uh, this will change, and uh, and uh, hopefully, of course, this will change, and there will be more damages to be paid uh, again. So I think it's critical now for insurance companies to think, you know, those six months ahead, one year ahead, and not to take excessive risks at this point because they will have to pay dearly, I think, uh, later on. Um, I think the year will actually end statistically not bad, uh, maybe even actually good with, with significant profits, but the key test will be, uh, will be in the first half of uh, next year when first the economic decline completely transpires and then a recovery of economic activity brings back more, uh, more damages as it does. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to, to hear also the opinion uh, of a market player. Uh, so uh, I would uh, invite Rumiana to, to give uh, and share with us uh, her point of view, uh, especially in this context, uh, looking at the regional statistics, Bulgaria, the, the your market uh, uh, has recorded at least in the first half of the year for which we have a uh, comparison terms. Uh, a better than average result. Uh, and uh, I think that should be some explanations behind this, <laughs> this uh, trend. Uh, could you explain how have you felt as a market player, an important market player, uh, the entire situation? Uh, actually, COVID-19 pandemic uh, put the insurance market in an unusual situation. Uh, and it was kind of a test for us, uh, to, for our resilience to the crisis and also stability on, uh, on the sector. Um, I can say that the insurers, uh, Bulgarian insurers, uh, passed this test uh, quite successfully. Within a day, they succeeded uh, to... Uh, to change and transform their business processes uh, so that to uh, react uh, uh, and reflect uh, the market needs and uh, the client's needs. Uh, we uh, provided different, new different digital solutions, products and uh, different services to the clients and uh, to, 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 to provide a normal environment to, to do our business, uh, everyday business, which uh, I can say is seen uh, in... Uh, Q3 general insurance results, which are almost uh, uh, getting the same uh, the same premium levels like uh, in uh, 2019, compared to almost a 3.5% decrease in May, which means uh, the sector is going to a stable recovery. We could not say the same for life insurance, but uh, where the decreasing uh, trend is uh, continues, uh, but uh, this is... Uh, a uh, normal, uh, normal um, result uh, from uh, unstable economic situation and uh, uncertainty of a uh, big part of the population, I can say. So, 
uh, the stabilization of the markets in the future for the next year, I think, will depend on the, the processes within the country worldwide and the pandemic situation, because uh, we are uh, we are uh, connected with uh, the all lines of business, and uh, it's difficult to to do short and midterm forecast at the moment. But I think uh, performance for this year and for the situation that we were put of the Bulgarian insurers were quite uh, good. Rumiana, I would like to ask you uh, another thing. Uh, speaking with the market, the important market pairs from other countries, some have defined their priorities uh, for this period as being con protecting their own uh, employees. Uh, their own workforce and uh, making things so that uh, they can uh, uh, protect their talent portfolio, let's say. Others mm -hmm. uh, have said that the main uh, focus was on uh, protecting their client portfolios, especially on the corporate side where mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. uh, worse, uh, worsening uh, economic situation uh, has affected their uh, disponibility, financial disponibility for uh, buying insurance. How mm -hmm. would you say, uh, from your point of view, is the situation in Bulgaria? Actually, we worked in both sides. Uh, we, we took uh, the necessary measures to protect to protect the staff, dividing into different uh, teams uh, 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 and shift uh, on the uh, working on different shifts. Some some stayed in the office. Uh, the biggest part uh, was working uh, from home, and it was uh, really possible because we have prepared. Uh, we have already prepared uh, for to do in a few days uh, the digital connection to all the staff from and uh, provided. Uh, all necessary facilities to work from, from home. And uh, on the other side, uh, we are actively communica uh, we're communi communicating with our clients. The good things for us was that we have long-term clients uh, devoted to the, comp uh, to the company. And what I have observed on the market, the clients prefer to stay with their current insurer and not to move to, to another one uh, unless uh, they have an issue, of course. Did you uh, um, take some measures to ease a little bit the relations for the corporate uh, customers, especially allowing for delayed payments or uh, better conditions or maybe some price adjusting in this period? Yes, of And course. especially in the period of the lockdown. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, we discussed with the clients and if they had some issues uh, issues with uh, payment, delayed payments, that was possible. We issued necessary documents or, so that uh, to, to allow them uh, to, to pay the premiums in more installments, for example, or to pay with delays uh, and uh, provide uh, all, all, all support to them. Okay, <laughs> that, that explains uh, probably also their fidelity <laughs> towards their insurer. Yeah. Uh, and uh, let's see now for a closer view to the motor insurance segment. Uh, uh, Stefan, I would like to, to hear from you, uh, from your position in the National Bureau of Bulgarian Ins Motor Insurers how things went on this side because uh, uh, in many markets uh, our uh, guests have said okay it is uh, it is uh, real that there were less uh, road incidents and uh, maybe uh, for this uh, reason uh, less claims to pay but on the other hand the severity of the the claims was not uh, decreasing and uh, in the end when everything uh, came back and the lockdown ended motor insurance remained a challenge for for insurers as before the crisis is this real first of all hello to, uh, good afternoon to everybody and uh, i wish uh, that next conference will be held live in sofia oh. <laughs> i wish you 
to make it next year. Uh, as the previous uh, speaker said, uh, the crisis, the COVID crisis, impacts all the markets, including the insurance market, but not in all its segments. The motor third party liability insurance was impacted, not that much, I would say, not impacted, as you said. Uh, the crisis led, uh, led to uh, less travels, less green card exposure for the companies. As you probably know, the Bulgarian Green Card Bureau uh, has signed uh, last year a common windshield treaty. The leader is Swiss Re. And this year we renewed the treaty with very, very favorable conditions, which means that the top big I think the top second reinsurer in the world, Swiss Re, has uh, estimated their exposure much lower than the previous year, just because of the less green card exposure. On the other hand side, it's a problem that is uh, not only for Bulgaria, also for Romania, but a lot of our fellow citizens, they live and work in West European countries, in Italy, in Germany, and they're with their own cars and they make accidents. So, as you said, the frequency of the claims is much, much lower than previous years, much lower, which leads to positive results for the insurance companies. On the other hand side, uh, the severity of the claims is not lower. Maybe it's because of the lockdowns, people are getting upset, they're losing their jobs, and uh, this changes their behavior on the roads. Uh, but still, I think the crisis, which is one of the toughest crises in our lives so far, uh, is positive for the development, the technical, on the technical point of view, of course, not talking about all the aspects, but it's positive for the technic technical results of the insurance companies. Okay, we will uh, come back a little later to, to speak uh, about the uh, trends that this crisis raised and maybe are helpful for the, uh, in the end, for the technical profitability also of the motor lines. But uh, for this moment, I, I would like to find out again from uh, Mr. Savov, uh, what measures can the market authority take so that uh, it can support market players to, to maintain a healthy and uh, uh, good sustainable business in this context, very special. Uh, thank you. Well, the regulator, of course, uh, wants everybody to be healthy. <laughs> uh, but uh, the first and foremost, of course, our mandate is to take care of the insured, uh, of the insured persons, right? So um, at the very first stage of the, of the pandemic, when uh, it became clear that, you know, the impact will be um, severe, um, the Bulgarian Financial Supervision Commission, um, following also the guidelines of uh, AIOPA on that, um, advised the, the local insurance companies to basically to do whatever it takes to make sure that the insured uh, people and the claims um, are uh, managed, processed and paid in a timely manner. And to make things uh, easier uh, for, again, for our supervised entities, again, following uh, the general practice that was established among supervisors during that time and the guidelines of AIOPA, uh, what we did, we gave uh, more leeway uh, on the reporting side. Um, basically, gave uh, gave companies time to report at a later uh, stage. Um, the otherwise quite burdensome, as we all know, um, supervisory um, information. And uh, this is something that I think has been uh, appreciated uh, by the sector as well. Secondly. Of course, we asked everyone uh, uh, how they ensure the continuity of uh, their business, something that uh, 
that Mrs. Beto was talking about, and uh, I, I, I tend to fully agree and confirm that uh, the insurers in Bulgaria were very quick uh, in finding solution in uh, solutions and in um, adjusting their business uh, to the challenges that uh, that the pandemic and social distancing uh, put. Now, of course, uh, with this uh, with this new approach to to, to the business. Uh, come other questions which were previously not envisaged in our uh, legislation and also uh, our bylaws. Um, and this is something that we need to, to think uh, really for the future and to make uh, necessary changes because clearly the, the technologies have moved from, you know, 10 years ago when the solvency uh, two directive was uh, envisaged. Um, the, the market, the solution, the practices, the business, the consumers themselves have moved even now as we speak. Um, we speak on um, on a Zoom platform, which <laughs> which um, nobody knew that existed one year ago, essentially. Uh, and uh, and uh, this and other uh, solutions of that kind are helping uh, helping the business, helping the consumers uh, to to continue. Um, almost as usual. But for some of these solutions, we need uh, new regulatory uh, solutions or adjustments. And, uh, and we are prepared to work together with the business uh, to find uh, the best way forward, indeed, uh, so that, uh, um, again, the consumer is protected, but uh, the business uh, can uh, proceed and move forward in this, uh, in this new environment. So, I think uh, this will be our bigger um, bigger project uh, for the coming months: digitalization, um, online uh, services, um, online claims, anything related to to social distancing, working from home. Um, we will have to find uh, um, some better solutions in our um, in our legislation, in our bylaws, in our guidelines for the business. Uh, we have received a question from uh, our public. Uh, somebody was asking uh, you, uh, how do you evaluate the readiness of the sector to comply with SAG, SAG issues? Uh, of course, SAG is not related uh, with the special situation of 2020, but uh, life goes on despite yeah. the pandemics. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah, I have to say, of course, it's a, it's a big topic, uh, environmental, social, and uh, governance uh, issues uh, across, uh, across the board. And, uh, and, you know, everybody talks about it, EOPA talks about it, the other bodies of the European Union, um, about ESG, ESG investing, ESG approach to instruments, and so on. Um, as it concerns Bulgarian insurers, I, I guess, indeed, the last several months have hardly been... Um, um, helpful uh, to to allow companies and management to think about anything else besides uh, really continuity and sustainability of the business. But uh, um, everybody has been doing something along those lines. I think at least you know six nine months ago, uh, some companies usually are better prepared than others. And here, uh, those that benefit from, uh, from their being part of a large uh, financial insurance uh, groups, of course, uh, perhaps are uh, a bit ahead of the others. Uh, um, and again, this is a, this is a longer term, longer term priority uh, that we will focus on in the coming months and even years, but the first one perhaps is really uh, more on the uh, COVID-related and uh, social distancing-related uh, measures that, uh, that we need to take care of first. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, coming back to the actual market players, uh, I would like to find out uh, if, uh, in your opinion, there are some uh, risks lines, some uh, business lines that 
uh, have already seen an increased interest from the customers. I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe liability products, certiship, uh, uh, financial losses, insuring financial losses, uh, cyber. Could you say that uh, there is an increased interest for other types of insurance lines than the traditional motor and uh, property lines? Uh, Are you asking me? Ah, okay. uh, Romiana, I was asking. Uh, actually, what we are seeing uh, as an increased demand at the moment, we see uh, a demand uh, for coverage of COVID-19. And this is <laughs> an extra covers for uh, personal, personal accident lines, health insurance and life insurance. Um, insurance responded to, the, to that uh, demand and uh, currently in the market, uh, there are already, they uh, already offer products, uh, uh, corporate and uh, individual products covering COVID-19, diagnostic of COVID, treatment, hospitalization, even loss of life. Uh, um, we have developed uh, also a special, uh, some insurers have developed uh, to support uh, Bulgarian tourism, special product covering vouchers that were issued um, um, for canceled trips. Uh, also, uh, travel products uh, started, um, started covering COVID-19 because uh, uh, the market demand um, was uh, for, for this coverage and increased limits. Uh, but uh, for liability side um, uh, and uh, financial losses, it's still a very low interest uh, for for new new and extra coverage like denial of access, etc. Well, maybe at least uh, health insurance will benefit somehow uh, <laughs> uh, of an increased interest uh, of the customers. Yes. Uh, we are uh, at this point uh, changing a little bit our discussions toward uh, uh, the future perspectives. But mm -hmm. before doing this, I would like to share with you uh, uh, the image of the homepage of exprim.com, the mm -hmm. uh, insurance portal where you can find lots of information about the regional markets. And as you can see, uh, the first thing you are seeing when entering the website is uh, the access point to the latest reports that we have issued. Uh, and I uh, warmly invite you to, to visit and to try to read them. They are full of uh, information, very interesting, uh, information about mm -hmm. all the markets in the CE, in the CIS regions. And mm -hmm. of course, other pieces of news, information, interviews, lots of things, very interesting uh, mm -hmm. there. So my invitation stays. Here is the actual copy of the report I was showing okay. you earlier. And uh, with this, uh, I would like to move a little bit to the future trends. And I would start by speaking with uh, you all about uh, the benefits, but also the threats that the digitalization, the, the high speed digitalization that uh, uh, has happened this year because of the pandemics uh, is introducing in uh, your business and activity. Uh, is cyber a risk, a risk that should be considered more carefully with more attention? Uh, also maybe, present it better to uh, customers? Uh, and on the other hand, how much digitalization has helped you to better relate to the customers and uh, better service them? Rumiana, you can continue and then we will yes. go to the other guests. Uh, COVID-19 was a kind of catalyst for these uh, digitalization processes uh, and uh, many uh, processes that were uh, have started uh, was uh, really very fast 
uh, developed uh, uh, to to support to support everyday work uh, uh, and uh, provide uh, different digital solutions uh, to the clients and uh, optimize internal business processes of the companies. And uh, all these developments, uh, in uh, my view, lead uh, to uh, increased uh, cyber risk. Um, of course, uh, here on the market, we have uh, sev uh, a very good uh, cyber products, but uh, and we have tried for several years uh, to to raise awareness and promote uh, those that line of business to try to explain customers uh, that this is uh, really very important to have uh, and uh, how big losses uh, for the company could be if uh, some uh, cyber attack and the losses they have. Uh, but unfortunately, at the moment, we don't see any big interest from the clients. It's, uh, the interest is really very low, which seems for me quite strange compared to developed markets and especially for a market like United States where there is no company almost without such kind of cover. Well, probably after you will uh, experience uh, the first cases of, uh, I don't know, ransomware <laughs> attacks mm, or yeah. something like this in, uh, in your country, the interest will uh, increase. Uh, certainly for motor insurers, uh, digitalization yeah. has uh, brought lots of benefits. We have seen a lot of improvement all over the region in terms of uh, claims services, mm -hmm. uh, dedicated apps, a uh, lot of initiatives. And uh, I would uh, go to Stefan now to ask him if, in his opinion, in your market, this is a, a strong trend also as in other markets. It's true. Uh, digitalization is quickly, quickly developing on the Bulgarian market. As you said, uh, most of the companies, they created apps for claim services. Uh, clients should not wait for delays, should not go to, to meet uh, with their respective uh, persons in the companies and to get their claims settled. They can do it digitally, of course. This is a risk also for the companies. The risk of insurance fraud is increasing enormously because of the lack of control. But on the other hand side, this is the future and companies are inventing more and more serious ways how to protect themselves from fraud. On the other hand, on the other hand side to service their clients better. And uh, talking about cyber risk security, to get back to your previous question, um, a lot of companies uh, on the Bulgarian market are offering cybersecurity protection. As Ms. Betova said, still the interest is low, but I think in the very near future, there will be a lot of plans for cybersecurity protection insurance because we are going in a digital world and money are becoming digital. So th this is the trend and it cannot be stopped. Yes, of course. And uh, uh, as far as new generation of consumers, which are digital born or already are emerging, uh, it will be a must for everyone. Uh, from a supervising point of view, Mr. Savov, would you say that uh, digitalization needs also for you to uh, take some special measures to supervise a little bit some processes uh, additionally as compared with the previous periods? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, and uh, we already try to do uh, at least to evaluate the state of play and uh, the, the capabilities of, uh, of the insurers vis-a-vis um, -vis, uh, the, the digital services, the cloud uh, uh, resources that they use, how secure are they, um, how safe uh, is personal information of uh, consumers, insured persons, um, uh, protected, uh, the, the risks of breach or fraud. Uh, uh, to us as a regulator, it also poses challenges because we uh, also don't have these capabilities to evaluate ready, so we have to develop them. 
and um, and, and sometimes uh, attract them uh, externally because we may not have the the, the relevant specialists at hand. Uh, we ourselves, again, the way that we collect, process, uh, and, uh, and, and, value, and evaluate information for supervisory reasons, this is also changing because, uh, again, um, you know, a few years ago, everything was paper-based and uh, we cannot afford this anymore, uh, in this, uh, in, especially in this environment. Um, uh, and we can, if we demand uh, this from our supervisor, and it is clearly that uh, we also need to adjust and change. So um, on, on both sides of the equation, internal and external, uh, the, the Financial Supervision Commission is, uh, is following the route of digitalization. It will take, uh, it will take time and resources, but uh, perhaps that's the benefit indeed of, uh, of the crisis, as, uh, as Ms. Betova mentioned. Many projects that were envisaged or started and were moving slowly um, suddenly received a, a very strong uh, impulse to be completed. Um, so uh, that's perhaps the silver lining uh, in the in the in the whole crisis that we saw. Yes, as you said, the priorities have changed inevitably uh, in this uh, special moment. But uh, I think that uh, something didn't change, meaning on the in the top of priorities, and uh, this element is the consumer. Uh, it remains a top priority and a uh, subject of uh, high concern for all insurers. But I think, uh, as many have already said, uh, is changing uh, expectations, behavior. Uh, people want to services that emulate somehow uh, the services they are receiving in other sectors in, uh, I don't know, traveling, uh, ticketing, airs, ticketing, uh, lots of uh, things that uh, are uh, close to uh, click on the mouse to be solved. And they are expecting also from, the, uh, from insurers to receive the same kind of services and uh, efficiency. And uh, uh, I would uh, like to hear from you, in fact, what have you already seen in your market Rumiana, would you say that your customers are changing them, themselves with this situation? Uh, do they have other expectations from you? Uh, actually, uh, I think all uh, sides of uh, this process uh, have uh, learned that we can work in a different way and it would be uh, probably even better than... Uh, the previous one, uh, I can say that the consumers uh, uh, started seeking a, be a better and fast service from us, uh, especially uh, uh, using uh, this uh, um, this electronic signature, uh, all these online services, and if possible, we can uh, uh, offer them everything online. In this situation, it would be the best. <laughs> Unfortunately, some things could not happen online, so there is still um, paper paper communication and uh, other type of uh, like uh, surveys, and and that's it. But uh, this is uh, the reality. Uh, with respect to the products, uh, we have noticed that uh, the, um, the clients started seeking. Uh, products with um, um, more extended coverage, not uh, the basic ones, especially for travel insurance. Uh, while they were uh, feel they, uh, themselves uh, quite safe, uh, they're um, buying only the basic, um, in, in most of them are, were buying the basic options. Now they're seeking uh, the extended coverages and the, broad, the broader coverage uh, for, for the product. So could we say, in your opinion, that uh, the, the main criteria, the price criteria, which was the main for years in these regions and many markets, is somehow letting place for other uh, criteria in, uh, yeah. in uh, customers' eyes? Yeah, I think they are now look, uh, look, uh, look, 
looking more uh, protection than the uh, than uh, seeking the, the cheapest price. Would you, uh, Stefan? Would you confirm such an opinion? <laughs> would you say uh, that motor <laughs> customers are uh, paying more attention to the quality of the products they are buying than to the actual price of it? Of course, uh, the Bulgarian market is price sensitive. That's true, especially for motors third party liability. But on the other hand side, I would confirm what Mrs. Betula said, that uh, customers are more keen to better services, digitalization, better services, fast services, so, so social distancing is the leading factor in this case. On the other hand side, I would uh, divide the customers to individual customers and corporate customers. The individuals, they're price sensitive on the other one hand side, on the other they want better service. If they cannot meet in person, if can go from the computer there to get the service done. On the other hand side, the corporate customer, the corporate customer is expecting something else. Corporate customers, they want to protect their business. Uh, in the past, business interruption was not a business line very common in Bulgaria. Now, a lot of business customers are searching for business interruption protection. On the other hand side, they look at the security of the companies because we are living in an uncertain world. So everybody wants to protect his business in continuity. So uh, Mrs. Petula is quite right. Things are moving in that direction and it will continue like this. And the insurance companies should follow the market. Well, hopefully at least this uh, situation has uh, uh, increased awareness towards insurance in general and its necessity. But something that uh, Rumiana said earlier, uh, uh, leads me to the, my next questions for Mr. Savov. I would like to find out for you, what are the limitations in, in uh, doing online uh, sales and uh, claims processes? There are still some uh, regulatory changes that need to be uh, done so that uh, full processes can be, can be uh, uh, operational, online, without paper, completely paperless? Yeah, as I said uh, previously, not everything can be done uh, paperless or online uh, yet. Uh, and, uh, and changes are needed in, on the high level in our uh, insurance code, which is the main law governing all sides of insurance uh, in Bulgaria, which uh, stipulates that uh, insurance contract is um, essentially a paper contract, right? There should, there should be some paper exchanged. So uh, this, um, um, you know, of course, the whole world is talking about uh, digital, electronic, smart contracts uh, and, and things like this. So this is something that, uh, you know, we need to consider going forward. For MTPL insurance, we still have, um, you know, a, a specially designed uh, sticker that, uh, that uh, the has to be on the on the uh, on the screen of the of the car, uh, and uh, some say it's not needed anymore. Others say it's still a very valid because uh, you, you can check uh, if the car is insured uh, online. Others said it's still um, uh, important uh, because um, it prevents uh, fraud. Um, it's designed in such a way that it's unique. And um, this is something that this debate, I guess, uh, will be ongoing for, uh, for a bit more uh, in our local market. But uh, having said that, I think it's clear that still, uh, you know, the secular trend is uh, towards more online and more digitalization. If there is some line to be drawn somewhere, okay, we will draw it and we'll say this remains, you know, the old traditional way. But I think many, uh, many products and many classes of insurance uh, will be moving to digital going forward. Well, inevitably, we are moving towards uh, the end of uh, this show. Uh, times went uh, very, very rapidly. And uh, in the end, I would like to hear from you all 
what do you think about your market per perspectives for the coming months, for the end year? Uh, how would you define the priorities ahead you uh, in uh, the actual the current uh, context? And I would uh, start uh, with uh, the ladies in the show, with Rumiya. <laughs> Please let us know. Uh, thank you. In my view, I think that, that uh, in the future months, our insurance uh, market revolu uh, evolution would be towards further digitalization and product flexibility for the moment. <laughs> we will okay. see in the next then, years what will happen. Then uh, I would say modernization, rapid modernization and flexibility. Okay, yes, yes. <laughs> good to know that. Uh, uh, Stefan? If uh, I should follow Rumiana to say with one word, stability, mm -hmm. uh, especially talking about the motor party liability market uh, from the view of the bureau the green card bureau i would say that the market is very stable very well protected from on the reinsurance side and the results are good so i see stability okay this is a quite optimistic uh, view uh, i'm happy to hear it and uh, in the end, what is the supervisor saying about <laughs> the perspectives, <laughs> let's say? <laughs> I, uh, well, uh, perhaps uh, I think, uh, you know, the business is, uh, is the business. And uh, of course, they should do what they do best to organize themselves such that, you know, they, they take care of their clients and they hopefully generate profit in the process. For the supervisor, the priorities remain the same all, always. And these are consumer protection first, financial stability second, but equal with consumer protection, mm -hmm. and then helping the business if it helps the first two priorities. And I think along these lines, we will continue, of course, with the inevitable adjustments that we discussed and that uh, the pandemic and the new way of, uh, of doing business is, um, is uh, presenting to us. Well, that being said, I would uh, rather say that uh, you seem modestly optimistic, <laughs> let's say like this. Uh, uh, so there are expecting, like, uh, there are to be expected changes in the future months as well, but also the classical, the traditional lines uh, are still here to be followed. Uh, Thank you all for your presence and for your contributions. Uh, thank you also uh, our viewers for their attention. Uh, once again, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to follow us on LinkedIn, on Facebook. We are uh, coming there each week with other novelties and we will not stop. Also for the next year, there are lots of projects waiting to meet you. Uh, and uh, given that uh, this is uh, our last meeting for uh, 2020, uh, it is uh, the moment that uh, I will need to invite you to remain together with us also next year to address a special thanks to the sponsor of this series of shows, Euroins, part of the Eurohall group, an uh, already regional player, well known. Uh, also for the meeting of today to RECREX, uh, an insurance service provider which is very appreciated both in uh, its home market in Romania and in Bulgaria where uh, it uh, operates. And that being said, I just want to wish you Merry Christmas, a happy holiday to you all, a well-deserved time of relaxation and meet us in 2021 again. Goodbye. Thank you very Goodbye. much. Thank Goodbye. you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays and stay safe. <laughs>